Chance, and I'm here at SuperDroid Robots located in North Carolina. In this video, I'll be covering the features and operating procedures for the HD2S with ARM, aka Mastiff, from our tactical line of track robots. The Mastiff is a great piece of tactical equipment for increasing the distance between you and possible harm. Not only does it have a lot of the same features as the Doberman, but it has the added advantage of the six-axis robotic arm. This increased capability allows it to go beyond tackling tough terrain and surveillance tasks to remotely manipulating objects. Its size, along with this robotic arm, allow it to push, drag, pick up, and carry objects to intended locations while keeping the operator in a safe location. This particular robot is often used for surveillance, EOD, hazmat, object manipulation, opening doors, package recovery, and hostage negotiation. Here are some of the features. Aggressive tread, weatherproof chassis, backup IR camera, front IR camera, laser pointer, LED lighting, two-way audio, tactical spotlight, and rear stabilizer bar. Deploying the robot is quick and simple. First, you want to begin by powering on the robot, then open up your OCU, Operator Control Unit, turn that on. After the beep, turn on the tablet. When the tablet loads, open the program and wait for the video feed. On the right of the tablet is a kinematic display of the robot's top and side view showing the position of the arm relative to the chassis. The size and orientation of the display can be adjusted by the slide bar just below the image and touching the side of the robot you want to see while dragging to rotate. In the same window are the battery life levels shown with the name of each unit being powered. Signal and connection display are located at the bottom of the screen. Video quality can be lowered to increase operational range or increase to yield a crystal clear image of the camera's field of view. Robot speed can be adjusted between high and low. The pan tilt zoom camera can be parked by pressing the home PTZ button in the event you become lost as to which direction the camera is looking. The arm can be automatically parked as well by hitting the park button. Take caution by always ensuring that the arm has clearance to make automatic adjustments before pressing. The arm will work through the parking process from the furthest point out first meaning that the base of the arm will be the last thing that rotates to fully park the arm. Quad view takes the screen to an equally sized view of all four cameras so you know exactly what's going on with each one. Camera mode can be cycled through to select from a variety of camera view layout patterns. This is particularly helpful if one screen needs to be used while the others are only monitored. Selecting a specific camera will only display at that particular camera in the program screen. Depending on lighting conditions, there is an option to increase or decrease screen brightness. In the event that you have poor video connection, there is a refresh button for the video feed in the top left corner of the program screen. After pressing record video or snapshot buttons, a prompt will let you know that the process has started or ended. Press OK to clear the screen. If you want to hear what is going on from the robot's perspective, tap on the speaker button. When finished with the action, press the button once more to end the speaker function. When needing to verbally communicate through the robot from the remote, press and hold the microphone button during use. During operation of the joysticks, everything is very intuitive and self-explanatory. The direction of operation corresponds to the movement of the robot. Forward and back motion on the drive stick moves the robot forward and back. Forward and back motion on the arm and camera sticks move these sections up and down. Left and right motion on the wrist moves the wrist section up and down. Left and right joystick action for drive, camera, and arm joysticks move those sections in the same direction. On the bottom right, there is a power button with LED indicator light, showing that the controller is on or off. Gripper open and close is a right or left moving switch. 
Camera zoom and focus buttons take the pan tilt zoom camera through up to 30 times optical zoom with an autofocus as it cycles through each zoom level. Focus can be adjusted at each level if required. If at any point in time the robot becomes unresponsive or needs to be reset, remotely reset the robot by pressing and holding the reset button on the bottom left of the controller and waiting for a two second beep. Then release that button and wait for the screen to reload camera display. Stabilizer bar adjustment is intended for use during navigation of steep inclines or for pushing objects. The lights button turns on camera LED floodlights, the tactical spotlight, and laser pointer if the pointer has been turned on prior to robot deployment. The spotlight and laser can be set not to come on when this button is pressed by pressing the buttons on the right and left side of the spotlight mounted on top of the camera. Now that it's up and running, let's see it in action. At the end of your mission, when you're ready to shut down the robot, make sure the arm is in the far position. And then start by shutting down the tablet. Exit the program, and it's going to ask you if you want to shut down the tablet as well. Say yes. When that starts shutting down, power off the OCU itself. And then you can power off the robot. When preparing for your next mission, you need to charge the robot. Open the case up, fully extend the cables, begin by plugging the main charger into the wall. Now open up the robot by undoing these screws. I normally put them in the lid so I don't lose them. And undo the connectors on the batteries. Keep these cables out of the way that run to the robot. And make sure all the colors match when you're plugging in the charger. White to white, green to green, red to red. Plug in the OCU. When you first plug in the charger, before you plug it into the equipment, all the lights will be green, indicating that it's ready to charge. Once you plug it into the equipment, all the lights will be red, indicating that it's charging. Once everything's fully charged, you'll know because the lights on the charger will be all green again. Then you can unplug it from your equipment, pack the charger up, and you're ready for the next mission.